Hello and welcome back to The Pursuit. Hi, my name is Max and I'm so glad that you're here. And my name is Ben and we are getting closer and closer to Christmas and I'm getting so excited. Really? I kind of took you as a bit of a Grinch, to be honest. What? Me? Yeah, I mean, like, you kind of hate Christmas music. I don't hate it. I just think it should only be played on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Kind of Grinchy. Well, anyway, uh, it's a good challenge. I got a good challenge for you this week. Uh, seeing as that you're old and getting close to retirement, I want to see how well you understand young people language. One, I'm not near retirement. And two, I understand what young people talk about. Sure you do. But let's find out. I'm going to give you uh, the Gen Z version of a couple of Bible verses, and I want you to see if you can guess the scripture reference. Okay. Sounds pretty easy to me, because you know, I'm freestyling fresh. Okay. Forget it. Let's start the game. Perfect. Okay, so, uh, the first one. God thought the world was so fired, he ghosted his literal son, so that all of his hashtag followers would low-key live forever. That's easy. John 3.16, bro. Fair enough. All right. Easy. Yeah. Here we go. Second one. Uh, and God was like, it's lit, fam. And it was lit, fam. Then four fire emojis following that. Uh, Come on. Lit, Think. You know this. Think creation. Uh, is it when God made light? Yeah. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Okay. So this that one was a little bit harder, but uh, here we go with the other one. Ready? Oh my. <laughs> Dee Zaddy up in heaven. You're holy and lit. Your kingdom is coming. If you ask us to do stuff, we'll say yes on it, on earth and in heaven. Let's get this bread and squash beef with people we've clowned on. As we squash beef with those who have clowned on us, please don't tempt us and please help us cancel evil. <laughs> I'm not even sure you know that one. Yeah, I figured uh, you'd struggle on that one. Uh, it's Matthew 6, 9 to 13, uh, which says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive, forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Uh, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh, I see now. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, you're pretty old. Well, thanks for that vote of confidence, bro. Anytime. Moving swifty on, haha, <laughs> see what I did there? I brought up Taylor Swift into a sentence because I'm cool. But to move on, I actually grew up learning the King James Version of the Bible. Again, old medieval talk because you're that old. Ha, there are definitely some times where I feel like I have no idea what you guys are talking about or saying. We all have had seasons in our life where we feel like we really don't know what we're doing or how to solve a problem. And that's why we have schools and classes and things like youth group where we can learn more about things. Many of the people that are involved in the Christmas story didn't actually know what was happening either, but they trusted in the Lord. Today, we are gonna dive into how Jesus is a gift that we can easily give and easily share with others. Well, thanks for joining us today and make sure that you find more fun words to try and trick Pastor Ben with. So we want you guys to take a few moments to chat about this question. How have you ever felt unqualified to do something you were asked to do? Hey, it can be awkward when we are unqualified to do something. Maybe you feel out of your comfort zone. You were asked to deliver a speech in front of your classmates. You had to perform a solo in your school choir or orchestra. A friend came to you in tears, but you weren't sure how to comfort them. Someone asked you your opinion on a controversial subject and you weren't sure what to say. 
I remember one of the first times I was riding with the police and I was asked to direct traffic around an accident scene. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I just did what I felt like I'd seen when driving past other accident scenes. It's never fun to be thrown into something we don't feel prepared or qualified to do. When we feel unqualified, it's occasionally because we know we really are unqualified, which is okay. No one expects you to be an expert at everything. But sometimes we feel unqualified when we don't need to feel that way. We let the fear of messing up or embarrassing ourselves keep us from doing something we really want to do. When we feel unqualified, we become so aware of our own flaws and shortcomings that we're afraid to do what's been asked of us. But here's what we need to realize. Although we may feel unqualified to share God's gift, God's love to us uses ordinary people to share the story of Jesus. So why does it matter to God and to us? Let me ask you a question. How confident do you feel about talking about the gift of Jesus with others? If you weren't with us last week, we started a brand new series called Unwrapped, where we're unwrapping the true meaning behind the season of Advent, not Christmas. Like we said last week, Christmas isn't here yet, but Advent is. Advent is a time to prepare to receive God's gift. God's gift isn't a thing, but a person named Jesus, someone who has the potential to change our lives. Today, I wanna to talk about what we can do to not just keep the gift to ourselves, but to share the gift with others. Take some time for some self-reflection and think about this question. How confident do you feel talking about the gift of Jesus with others? If we believe that Jesus is the greatest gift of all, why don't we share that gift more often? I believe we don't always feel qualified to share about Jesus because of a few reasons. Reason one, we know we don't have all the answers to people's questions. Reason two, we aren't sure we are the most Jesus-like example out there. Reason three, we're afraid the conversation would become awkward. But, what if talking with others about the gift of Jesus wasn't that complicated? What if you were already qualified to share about the greatest gift the world has ever been given? We all have room to grow, but you don't have to be perfect to get started. You don't have to know everything about soccer in order to kick a ball around. And you don't need to be the world's greatest Jesus follower to tell someone about the gift of Jesus. And more than just having the right answers, there are many of us who believe that we aren't qualified because who's going to listen to someone who has their own secrets that they're ashamed of sharing, isn't exactly winning the popularity contest at school, looks, acts, and feels different from everyone else around them. Whether you're worried about how much you still need to learn or how much you still need to grow or how awkward you sometimes are, it's okay to be a work in process. Let me introduce to you a few ordinary people and one not so ordinary people who shared the gift of Jesus with others. Let's start with someone not so ordinary. John the Baptist was a prophet, someone God used to deliver messages to people. He was Jesus's cousin and he was a little odd, even for a prophet. He lived in the desert, ate bugs and made clothes out of camels. Some people may have thought John was unqualified because of his strangeness, but that didn't bother John. He continued sharing the gift that he knew was the greatest gift of all, the gift of Jesus. Let's read Mark chapter one, verses one to eight. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the son of God, as it is written in, the, in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. 
After he comes, the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. If you are wondering what that word repent means, it means to change your perspective and change your ways. It means you turn your life upside down because you know the way you'd been going wasn't the best way. There were skeptics, people who didn't think much of John or his message, but that was okay with John and with the crowds of people who did want to hear John speak. These people were tired of the way things were and were ready for the change John was promising. John shared the gift of Jesus with others, pointing people to their savior and then trusted God to take it from there. John's name is one we all know well because the way he shared God's gift with others so publicly. But if you pay attention, the Bible is also filled with the stories of ordinary people like you and me who shared the gift of God too. These people's stories haven't been captured in detail and they probably weren't very exciting stories, but that's the point. When we're invited to share God's gift with others, God asks us to share the gift of Jesus in everyday, ordinary ways. Listen to these two stories, especially the very last lines of each story. They're found in Matthew 9, 18 to 26. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd of people playing pipes, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but only asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of this spread throughout the region. First, Jesus healed a woman who had been suffering from a lifelong illness, an illness that made her an outcast in her community. Next, Jesus raised a girl from dead and acted like it was no big deal at all. For God, I guess it was a pretty easy task. Finally, do you see what happened? The word spread. Take just a few moments to chat about this as a group. How do you think the news of Jesus's healing spread? There wasn't a big news story about it. I mean, Jesus didn't call a press conference. The news about Jesus spread because ordinary people couldn't help but share what they had seen Jesus do. And now we read another story in Matthew 9, 27 to 31. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly. See that no one knows about this. 
but they went out and spread the news about him all over the region. Once again, Jesus does something incredible. He heals two blind men and one man who couldn't speak. This time, Jesus tells the crowd to play it cool and not talk about what they'd seen. That's because every time word would spread about what Jesus was doing, the religious or government leaders of that city would run Jesus out of the town and Jesus still had work to do. But the people didn't listen. Once again, the people who had seen the gift of Jesus in action couldn't help but share what they had seen. Again, the names of the people responsible for spreading the word about Jesus are never mentioned. Maybe because there were so many of them, but maybe because they weren't very exciting stories. These were ordinary people sharing extraordinary news in the midst of their ordinary lives. They weren't experts, they weren't famous, they weren't perfect, but they shared God's gift with others. So then, what does God want us to do about it? Before you ask for your own camel hair cloaks for Christmas or start shouting repent in the middle of your school hallways, know that there are other ways of sharing this incredible gift. It starts with praying for the people you know. Each of you ha should have received a blank gift tag. When we're done, I want you to write the name of someone you want to share Jesus with this Advent. Now set a reminder on your phone, pick a certain time you are going to pray for that person each day. If you can't set a reminder on your phone, write their name in a text to yourself. Leave it unread as a reminder. When you are ready to have a conversation with someone about the gift of Jesus, start with your story. When the word spread about Jesus' healings spread in the stories we read, it was because ordinary people shared stories about what they had seen. You have a story worth sharing. Whether God has been a big part of your story since the beginning or just a few weeks, your story of faith is one people need to hear. If people have questions about what you believe, be honest. Even if the answer is, I don't know, decide that you can figure it out together. Remember, it's okay if you don't feel qualified to tell others about God. God isn't looking for experts. God has always used ordinary people to tell the story of Jesus. This week, pray for the people who need to hear about the gift of Jesus. Invite them to journey with you and continue learning to tell your story of faith because you really can share God's gift with others. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that the gift of you is all we need to share. And so God, would you make us bold and faithful and strong as we go forward in this Advent season. We're excited to receive the gift of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, thanks for joining us again. And I'm especially excited for the opening of next week's series. We'll see you then.